Spurs are off to a hot start under Ange Postacoglu. His focus on attacking vibrant football has won the Tottenham fans over immediately, while his great human qualities have won over the rest of the footballing world. In the Premier League, they secured 10 points from 12 after beating Manchester United, Bournemouth and Burnley so far. Better yet, they're the joint second highest scorers in the league, level with Manchester City and behind only Brighton. All of this is even more impressive considering they sold their best player, Harry Kane, to Bayern Munich in the summer. So, what's the secret behind it? What is Ange cooking? The answer might surprise you. It's not because Spurs recruited a super-powered goal machine with a Kane money, nor is it because they've suddenly become an elite set-piece threat. No, it's because Postacoglu has fixed their build-up play, in turn opening up a whole new world for some of the players who played under Jose Mourinho and then Antonio Conte. In particular, the intriguing stories lie in the new fullback pairing of Pedro Porro and Destiny Udogi. Both Porro and Udogi played almost exclusively as wingbacks at previous clubs Sporting and Udinese. It raised fair questions as to how they might cope once Postacoglu took the job, as Ange has typically preferred a back four, often asking a fullback to invert into central midfield. That's the polar opposite of a typical wingback role, which burns up and down the line, staying as wide as possible. But good players and good coaching remedies plenty. And already in the space of four league games, we've seen Spurs build play using a variety of methods. Seemingly, Postacoglu's preferred method is to invert both fullbacks, creating a 2-1-2 shape with Yves Bissouma in between the two lines. Poro and Udogi take up positions you'd normally associate with central midfielders here, leaving the flanks completely empty in deeper areas. Here's an example of what they're trying to do. Goalkeeper Vicario will play the ball into Bissouma, who is facing him. He attracts pressure and plays a first-time pass to Romero. A midfielder, who you would usually expect to be where Poro is, then drops wide to open the pass up. The ball then goes back inside to Poro, who feeds it forward again. This is an excellent way of drawing a press in and playing through it, using the fullbacks as midfielders, then allowing the midfielders to find the space to receive. It's choreographed to an extent, but still asks the players to interpret what they're seeing. Sometimes this works, and sometimes it doesn't. There are times when staying this narrow creates problems, which Manchester United showed on match day two. Their narrow press forced four turnovers in Spurs' territory during the first half alone, leading to openings or shots on goal. Postacoglu noticed this and switched things up in the second half, encouraging the fullback nearest the ball to move wide to the touchline to offer a pass. This sequence shows the difference. Udogi is still inverted, but Poro moves wide right to receive the ball if needed. Saar then drops in to receive the ball, and in doing so opens up space behind him for a Charleston. Romero now has three options. Wide to Poro, short to Saar, although that's risky, or longer to Richarlison. He opts to lift it into Richarlison, thus playing over the press. Now this looks a bit more traditional, you might say, as the central midfielders are actually present in the central zones, while the fullback is actually wide. And it worked a treat. United only forced one turnover in Spurs' half during the second 45, and obviously conceded twice. This kind of flexibility is really important. Having multiple ways of beating an opponent's pressing strategies gives you the tools to succeed in different scenarios rather than just one. Giving the fullbacks the freedom to move wide to receive if the 2-1-2 shape isn't working is a sign of good coaching. It's also had a bit of a snowball effect on Poro and Udogi, even after only four league games. They're clearly now much more willing to switch up their movements and interpret what they're facing up against. The midfielders will follow their lead and pop up in all sorts of different places, which is why you saw, for example, James Madison take so many touches on the left deep in his own half against Bournemouth. The natural rotations of the team took him there so he could help build play from the back. It's worth noting, though, that despite placing a clear importance on building from the back, Postacoglu is more than happy for his team to play direct if the situation calls for it. Take the first goal against Burnley as an example. If a team are naive enough to press high, go man to man and leave you with a 2v2 on the halfway line, then logic tells you to hit that ball long, especially if one of those two is Son Heung Min. Again, this links back to flexibility. Having orchestrated build-up patterns is crucial in football in 2023, but players must be empowered to go off script and make alternative moves if the situation calls for it. 
Those are two typically different schools of thought. Pattern play is most commonly associated with Pep Guardiola, while off-the-cuff problem-solving is a mark of perhaps Carlo Ancelotti. If Postacoglu is mixing the two well enough to be considered the best of both worlds, well, that's high praise indeed. But look at the evidence. Udogi and Porro are playing brilliantly. Beyond them, Bissouma, Saar, Madison, Van der Ven and more are too. Ange has laid the foundation for it all and Spurs fans are lapping up every single second.